back to MacBreak Studio. We're going to look at motion today, and in particular, we're going to look at what? Cards? Throwing cards? Uh... Particles. Oh, particles. Yeah, but cards. Cards and particles together. Like uh, playing cards. Yeah, but using play car playing cards as particles. Check this out. This is, this is really cool. And, th and the fundamental idea here is um, using an image sequence as the source for a particle emitter. So when you okay. say image sequence, you mean in this particular uh, a, a, a bunch of still images? A sequence of images, yeah, just, just literally what that is. What? Doesn't matter what they are. So here's the idea. Um, I'm in motion, I'm in the file browser, and you can see uh, here I have a bunch of playing cards, uh, actually 52 of them, full deck of cards, plus a, a card back, which we'll get to in a minute. And I, I, by the way, I just want to interrupt here. Uh, he, he, he downloaded this image from iStock Photo, and he laboriously cut every one of those cards out of its background. Yeah, I'll show you. Oh, so here I'm what it is. So, here. Yeah, so I, I, bought, I bought this image on iStockphoto.com. Yeah. Um, this was a while ago because I knew I'd use this yeah. and cut them out to make individual cards. It, it wasn't that difficult, but you have to get the background out. So right. we end up with these individual cards. The trick here is to name them sequentially. Okay, so 001, I used four digits. Technically, you're supposed to use four, three usually works 001, 002. Um, because by naming them sequentially, you can make motion see those as one, basically like a QuickTime movie. A movie. Okay? And the way to do that when you're in the file browser is down near the bottom, there's a little button. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And this button, if we'll get a tooltip to come up, maybe we will, maybe we won't. No, I don't think we do in, in, I don't remember this in motion button five. In motion four. Was it, it was there, it was there, it but was. it had a tooltip. It doesn't show up here. This is the show image sequences as collapsed button. <laughs> it's got a long name. Kind of like the way Aperture collapses photos. It kind of like that, kind of like stacks. stacks yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Stacks. But um, here it's usually turned on by default. And I turned it off so you could see the individual cards. But if I turn oh, it on, 52. look at wow, that. Look at that. Yeah, now all of a sudden, all those cards goes down to a single card. You see it says card dot, 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 little so hash sign, one, one to 52. 52. So those are the numbering. There's a 52 cards that are represented by one image. And, and by the way, um, if you've sometime gone into motion in the file browser and you have some uh, images from a digital camera and you can't find them, it may be because they're all being represented. You know, they're numbered sequentially, right? Correct. They may be represented as an image sequence. And the way to find them is to go ahead and, and click that little button at the bottom to expand them out. Got okay. It. But in this case, I'm going to put them all together because I'm going to take them and bring them in. And if I play this project now, uh, you can see <laughs> wow. it plays a frame a piece of these cards. Let me actually bring it back to the beginning of the project here. Can um, you set the frame rate of that individual so it plays you up can't. by twos just, or threes? You can't. No, you like, can't. Okay, you can't. Yeah. But what I want to do is use this as a source for a particle emitter. And what kind of cool thing, if I just hit E to create a particle emitter, all of a sudden I'll get <laughs> wow. all these cards uh, expanding all over the place. And I can go to the emitter inspector and make some changes. Nightmare. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a mess right now. Um, let me go down to the bottom, and there's a place to play frames. I'll turn that off. So now, um, and a random start frame, but the start frame's on the top. So we get all these cards being generated. Okay. So now the trick is to manipulate the particle emitter to do something interesting. And rather than do that from uh, scratch, scratch here, what I'm going to do is just turn this guy off. I actually have set something up a little bit just for the sake of time. I've got a background, a little blackjack table here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I have some cards that are, you can see we've got an emitter and it's made out of the same uh, deck of cards. Right. Okay. So there's same a deck of cards sequence. emitter. And I've got some other things in here that make it look interesting. So right now, if I play the project, um, the cards are just shooting out. The one after another. just spitting them out in the same direction. Yeah. One, one. It's just one. Yeah. spitting them out because yeah. what I did is I restricted the emission range to be to very narrow, and right? Yeah. And I lowered the birth. Actually, the birth rate's pretty high, but then um, uh, I've got the speed cranked way up. So just shooting them out. And they're also spinning a little bit. It's a little hard to tell, but I've got some spin on them. Now, what I'm trying to do is make it look like these cards are being dealt and to do it without any keyframes, okay? Just purely with the emitter. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on, I've got some behaviors applied to this emitter. Behaviors are just amazing. So I'm going to add this one called drag, and that will um, add drag. And of course, I've adjusted the amount of drag to kind of stop them at the right point, I kind of that. air resistance, you know, like they're sliding on the table. Right. <laughs> but they're still spinning like crazy, <laughs> yeah. right? So I've also got something rotational drag. It lets me manipulate that separately. So I'll turn on rotational drag, and now these guys come in and they stop, and they also the spinning stops. And you get this sort of randomness to stack, you know, like you would have in real life, right? right? They're not, you could make them all perfect, but you want them to like 
not make it also computer generated, right? So it's got this nice natural look to it. So now we're dealing these cards out, but we're only dealing it to one person. Right, you want them to deal. Right, yeah. spread out. So what I'd like to do is, in, in let me select the emitter for a minute. Um, the emitter in the heads up display here has an emission direction straight down. You can see by the arrow. Right. But I have applied an oscillate parameter behavior. If I turn that on, you can see this little arrow swings back and forth now because it's, it's, it's like oscillating. A it's like a pendulum, yeah. And if you look at the cards being dealt, it is now dealing the cards straight to those three different people, going through and, and dealing them out. That's it's kind of cool, right? I mean, it's really cool. no, no keyframes at all, and it's randomly selecting a card every time. So we've got those <laughs> turned on. And then um, the only other piece here, let me see, if I turn on, I've got a little bit of animation on the rest of this here uh, that will show. I don't have it on in this one. So this lets you, so I've got one little card that comes out uh, by itself and turns around toward the end there, uh, a little ace of spades. So you can create additional animation. If you want a special card to come out, you can keyframe that. Right. Uh, but one more thing I'll show you. Let me just deal a couple cards here. So I'll stop there. So everybody's got two cards. You see an ace and a three and two jacks and a, and a jack and something else there. Um, it's random, right? But can you have it randomly give you a full house? Well, you can choose. Like back in the emitter inspector at the mm -hmm. bottom, there's a random seed. I see. And if you click the generate button, you can kind of create different hands here, right? So I'm just clicking the generate button. It's constantly creating different randomness. Now, sometimes you'll get two of the same card. And if you saw I that, there that. were like two queen of hearts there. Right. So you can kind of click through here and get the cards that you want. So, so one thing I've done, let me just open up this uh, finished one here to finish this off here. Um, we don't need to save that. So in this example, I've added a little camera move as so well. This is the finished one here. Yeah, so here now we're dealing the cards out, and we've got a pair of jacks, and then I've keyframed one card to flip over and, and give you a 21, okay? <laughs> but the cooler thing is most of this is created just with an emitter and behaviors, That's and it. a little bit of keyframing on that last card and a little camera move. So just something to give you an idea of the kind of the possibilities that's, with particles. That's amazing. So where can someone go to learn how to actually build that uh, project? Funny you should ask. So I've got a tutorial that goes in depth on particles, not just this project, but it's about 10 or 12 different projects of using smoke and fire and all kinds of interesting ways to add particles uh, to your projects. And uh, rippletraining.com, it covers how to build this in detail. And of course, the projects are supplied. Uh, but it really allows you to take your motion skills to the next level. And you can incorporate this stuff then into your Final Cut Pro 10 projects. It's fantastic. So there you have it. <clears throat> Some really great stuff uh, with regard to particles. I'm really looking forward to learning this myself. I, I, it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. So rippletraining.com, thanks for watching MacBreak Studio. See you in the next episode.